We're going to be on this spaceship for eight to ten months. Kim, um, how do you figure out the optimal crew so that we don't claw each other's eyes out <laughs> for well, a couple yeah, days? Well, yeah, it's a real problem. You know, uh, if you were to... So I run a um, Mars analog habitat in Hawaii, and what we do is we take groups of six people and we put them in a habitat and have them pretend that they're on Mars for four to 12 months. Um, and we pick people who are very astronaut-like in their psychology, because one thing we already know is if you just picked six people off the street and did this, they would be killing each other within days. Uh, what's, if, what's an astronaut-like psychology? Well, there's a lot of, di <laughs> <laughs> a lot of different tests, but a colleague uh, summarized it as a thick skin, long fuse, and an optimistic outlook. And to that, for a Mars trip, I would add easily entertained. Um, <laughs> easily amused is what she's trying to say. <laughs> because if you really need to go clubbing every weekend, or if you, you know, need to meet new people, or need to go climb a mountain every day, you're, you're not going to have a good trip. Um, so you know the kind of personality types you need. What about putting together a crew? We need one of these, one of these, one of these. How do you do that? So yeah, you're going to need a bunch of different skill sets. You're also going to need, in addition to the technical skill sets, uh, a bunch of different approaches to conflict resolution, to leadership, followership, and so on. So I like to liken it to a toolbox. Um, if you're filling a toolbox, you wouldn't fill it with hammers, even if they were all the world's best hammers. Um, and you also wouldn't fill it with Swiss Army knives, um, because there's a compromise that comes with having all of those uh, identical sets of skills. Instead, you want to have people with strengths in different areas, with different life experiences, uh, with different approaches to interpersonal uh, reaction, uh, interactions and so on. Uh, and that's, that's really how you go about how it. How about relatives? Is a good... Uh, to have people who are, oh, I'm <laughs> thinking that you know. <laughs> okay, uh, I'll, I'll give you two at once. Relatives, marriages. Okay, so uh, <laughs> I'm not turning it down completely, but there's some risks with that, as you might imagine. And one of the risks is a rift with the rest of the crew. Um, if two people have a very close uh, relationship, that could break them off into a subset, and you really don't want to cause those rifts in any way. Another way you cause rifts is uh, by having this sort of clustering. So for example, imagine you had a crew of three men and three women, um, three people from a civilian background and three from a military background, uh, three engineers, three scientists. Fine, that sounds all right. But what you don't want to have is three female civilian scientists and three male military engineers because they're going to split into those two groups. Right. So you try and avoid those kind of alignments as much as possible. So that, I think, is the risk with those kind of close relationships that you're talking about. What about um, in day, let's say, eight, we have a fight? They're not going to have it in day eight. <laughs> um, I'm betting at about the six-month mark, because that's what we see in our simulations. Um, basically, you know, you've got these people who are actually really good at getting along with each other. They've got a lot of these interpersonal skill sets. Because um, you work at it. I mean, you yeah, think about absolutely. this and you're... Yeah, we but can do we, that. We can work at this. Yeah, okay. well, what we found, I think NASA would have loved it if we could have come back and said, look, avoid factor X and you won't have any conflict. But it's just not the case. Anytime you have a group of people together for that long, you're gonna have conflict. And it comes from all sorts of different sources. Interpersonal issues, stresses from back home, disagreements over something important. Um, but what you really do need is to have this resilience to conflict. You need to have individuals and in a group of people who can have a conflict and then come back from it and return to a high-functioning state. And is there... Um some kind of chain of command that's important, like a military chain of command? Yes, there'll be a chain of command. Uh, we haven't found that the style of command matters all that much. You could have a, the military very hierarchical style, or you could have a more consensus-driven style. But one thing that's really important is that the style is agreed on, right. and that your leader and your followers share the same style or can share the same style.